you don't want to know the truth. You really don't. And I'm telling you, one of my colleagues is sitting right here in the back, and she will tell you, I hate technology and all of that, and I just had to embrace it. We had a playbook, and we thought this is what we were going to be able to do. And when the pandemic happened, we weren't able to do those things. The reality is that students will have to do learning virtually. Immediately, I started thinking, how are we gonna do this? How will students receive the support that they need while at home and in this virtual space? Oh. And that's for you, and that's the basket for the birthday kid. Oh. And this is for welcoming us into your home, so oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love flowers. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. This is my baby brother, Sean, right here. He's four. My little brother, Reggie, he's 11. My other little brother, Seku, he is seven. My little sister, Sequoia, she is nine. Right, right, all right. All right, that's my mom, my mom. All right, come on back here. This is my oldest sister, Akira. Just turned 17. All right, let's do this. This is where I am most of the day. Oops, hold on. So at this time, I will be in AP Human Geography my with my teacher, Miss Carrington. I think everybody has overused the word unprecedented because <laughs> it doesn't really capture the moment or what our teachers did this year for the students in our community. Coming into a new environment is challenging, even more so when you're doing it virtually. You don't necessarily get to feel the culture of the school from the computer in your house. I used to play football right there, and I used to, I used to like kind of think like, I was like, what if I lived around here long enough for me to go to the school? But I'm very glad that I do go to the school. I like a lot of these teachers that's here, and they make sure they check up on me every day and make sure that I still get done whatever's done, even when coming to home. So I'm glad that teachers do that for me. Oh man, I wonder where we about to go. Like, where we, where we about to go inside the school? Let me put my mask on. I wonder what I'm gonna be doing at this school. Class of 2016, 2014. There's a lot of kids here. The virtual year started with a lot of questions and concerns about how students would learn, how we would continue to foster and build relationships in a virtual space. We own that innovation. We are innovators in education. And when we went through redesign, we thought that, but I think COVID proved that. We've been able to adapt this year to implement our big bets by planning and being intentional with our actions. We had to be creative to ensure that we're successful with our big bets. Everything that we're able to do in a in-person posture, we were able to do in a virtual environment. Now, we, there were some hiccups along the way with our civil engineering pathway. That requires a lot more hands-on opportunities for our students, and we really didn't figure that out until mid-year. I would be terrified for everyone to solder at home. <laughs> They have a hot glue gun that came in the kits that they have. And sometimes I see on camera, I'm like, hold on, you have to clear your space. Like, it can't be on your bed and this way. Oh my goodness. I'm like, and don't leave it, unplug it. Oh man, Miss Blair is new to Anna. This is her first year, you wouldn't even know it. Those kids have taken to her, she's taken to them. She like fits right in. I have a 10th grade student, Julius Johnson. He's a first year student in the Engineering Academy. He could not get the isometric drawings. In fact, Julius stopped responding to me on the computer. He would log in and he would not answer me. Maybe if I called his name 10 times, he was like, what? And I'm like, why are you ignoring me? He said, this work is hard, I don't wanna do it. And I said, please just come in one time and let's just see if you come in one time, if you can get it. Yeah. So if we look here at our Y, right? Where's the height gonna be? Every time you make the height, it should be going on this line. This looks good, but look at your height right here. It should be here, you draw here. Virtually, if I do it along with them, like every line, they can follow, but they can't see it. If they can learn it this way, then my hypothesis is correct. So we'll see. I asked him to come back the next week to help me with any students that needed help. And he came another week just to help students. So Julius has become a teacher. Me personally, I start with drawing the height. 
the height is one. Work single, and then I draw the line right here. Yes. Really, Project Based Learning is a mindset. It's a shift in the way we think about learning. We see the working classroom as collaborative opportunities. Putting students in groups, even in the virtual space, to like talk through a challenge or talk through a problem. I spent this year trying to figure out how to do PBL virtually and like what are the big picture ideas? What are my students going to take away from this? Don't get me wrong, it was hard. And there were times where I was like, I'm just really failing at this. But I kind of had to change my mindset. How can I make virtual as successful as possible. The metrics are gonna be different. I would hope that the kids face challenges through engineering enough that they become comfortable. Honestly, my goal for all of my students and the program itself is exposure. In particular for the Public Leadership Academy, I want them to be able to understand how they can and will be able to give back to our community. We're not a product of our environment, but a product of our mindsets. What we are is not what we have to accept and stay in. Learning about the law and then being able to go to others who may not know about it and then just tell them is giving them more expansion of a voice, knowing their rights and things like that. We empower and equip students to disrupt oppressive systems so that they can become stewards in their community. We are about generational change. Every time we change a kid's life and trajectory, we have changed the trajectory of every person in their family that comes after them. That's our job. When you look at that kid, you should see their children and then their children. We are going to raise students who are going to be advocates, who are going to say, I am going to be a leader in my community and build up an Anacostia that is thriving, that is robust, that is proud, so that when people ask, why Anna? We can say it because we built up this community and we're proud of where we come from. My mother always said that my father hated struggling. My father was a hustler, he really wanted to like a good hustler. Like he really wanted to get out of poverty and bad situations around bad neighborhoods and all things like that. The day he lost his life, um, he told my mother that it was his last time. Um, he told my mother that he was ready to change it. He's trying to get better. Um, and then and then my mom was like, uh, later that day, the police came and said he was gone. But I always want to continue his legacy, you know? Um, he played, he also played football. He was a quarterback. I think I got his skills. I do. This was 11U from the championship. This was 13 junior midgets. We won the championship in Beacon House to go to Florida. These four right here, track, seventh grade. One of the biggest things I've seen during COVID athletics is now they're putting physical faces with physical people. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember you from this class. I actually feel great to have a track team and it also pushes me to like motivate myself and it's come it's making me come out as a person and like be make me be more social. Actually him and Keon are teammates and they got a bond that I don't think people can break. That's Reggie. Reggie. What's up, Reggie? Reggie said he could beat you, Mason. He's fast. He's fast. He's fast. Oh. The day I went to practice, my little brother Reginald came with me. That was fun. He actually, he liked it. I finally got to show him what I do. I don't know why, but he had on jeans that day. It was hot too. We were jogging, doing our laps, our warm up lap. He was already exhausted. Sometimes they're laid out on the field or the track, like, hey, like, I'm, I'm done. But at the end of the day, it's like that, just, just that bond to be able to be like, look, we're going to fight through this. Education, work, we're going to fight through it. If you need help, we, we're here. It teaches you not to give up when you're exhausted. When you're hurting, never stop. Just keep going, and you'll eventually reach the finish line. In this memory, I don't ever want to think about bad things that have happened. I always want to remember the good things that, have, that he has done. I learn from it too. I learn a lot from it. I understand that I don't want to. I don't want to be next. I don't want to. I don't want my mother to have to lose me as well. I don't want to continue generational curses. Well, with it's really just generational bad decisions continuing. When I think about that, I really focus and buckle down so I can really get out. So I could just make it. He's going to be successful. It's it's there already. He just has to keep going and not settle and not say, oh, I'm good already. You know, he has to keep working. Extraordinary kid, extraordinary kid. So this is Reggie's desk. As you can see, he has stamped it with his Spider-Man and Black Panther. This is Sequoia's. This is Seiko's computer here. They have all of their school supplies and printing paper. This is where Sean sits. 
and this is also my work computer too. I couldn't imagine being a teenager and having my phone, my TV, the internet at the time, let alone there's other people sometimes in your environment also pulling for your time and attention at that same time. It's kind of typical for the students here at Anacostia, multiple generations living under one roof, and the oldest sibling usually taking most of the responsibility of raising some of the siblings in the home. And now the siblings are now online and they need support with their work in order to be successful as well. So just imagine a 14, 15 year old having to manage all of that. It's just amazing to me. He helps out with his three year old brother. They sit together doing his work and still trying to make sure that his three-year-old brother is paying attention in class too while I'm attending to the baby. He does a lot, he really does. And he still manages to, to focus. I think it does something for the siblings, to be honest with you. What a great example to have your older sibling pour back into you to support you. And now you're seeing your older sibling maintaining through it all. That's gonna be a great story in terms of what we can expect to see years to come from his siblings. I feel like my little brothers, they like really watch me very closely. Anything I do, they'll end up doing it right. I see it. It's like, my mom explains to me, that's, that's what happens as a big brother. We get frustrated or something like that. They'll see how I react into certain things and it'll subconsciously go into the back of their minds and they'll begin to act the same way. Just want to show them that where we are is not where we have to stay. We don't have to be bounded by our past. We can always, you know, progress into a way better future, way brighter future too. Very bright. I set good goals for them. My little brother, he still kind of looks up to me to this day to always be himself and not like just to fit in with other people. Once they let us know like, hey, this is our area of struggle, we're then able to pull different resources to ensure that this family has what they need in order for the student in that house to be successful. And so that's what we did for Juan and it just paid off. We're talking about 14 and 15 year olds leaving a comfortable place where they've been for three years in middle school and now they transition to high and never set foot in the high school before. I think there was a huge disconnect. And I think with his other responsibilities, high school was kind of secondary. We started to notice that because we're tracking our students daily and when we don't see a student in class or our students are not engaged, it's noticed. We get good calls and bad calls from Juan. It doesn't matter. And it cost it right on top of it. You know, he missed one period, they call. Is everything okay? We didn't see Juan today. We think students should just log on and turn in their assignments. But in Juan's case, that wasn't the case. He really was online, he really was engaged, and then once the engagement happened, our perception of that student changed immediately because he just showed up. And when he showed up, he showed out in a very positive way. But I'm to be honest with you, like I had to reflect on that. How many times do we perceive something one way and then it turns out to be something totally different? And that's innate in all of our students at Anacostia. We just have to help extrapolate that raw genius that's in each of our children here and bring it out. This is our first time like seeing each other. <laughs> hey Juan, I'm gonna hug you. How are you? It's so good to see you. Let's chat Juan. Listen, you don't even call me anymore when I text you. I mean, what, what, what life are we living now that you know you can't even talk to Ms. Trotman anymore? What's going on? A lot of home stuff. A lot of home stuff? Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to do it. Just... I know that, son. I know. Ms. Trotman has been at Anacostia for years, and she calls the students her babies because she takes on that role. She cares deeply about students, about their success, and making their dreams become a reality. We'll meet like at some point before the end of the school year so I can tell you like what the honors classes are and AP courses are so you can tell me which ones you want to take. And then we're going to get you off to college, get you some scholarships. That's the goal, right? You can say that. Uh, it has to be. They are in Juan's face and she's going to call him every day, every morning. Are you up? Let's go. It's time to get started. And I think that in your face, like I believe in you but I have high expectations for you, is how they re-engage so many students who I think weren't active because of fear, because of access, but they, they took those barriers away. Dropping off laptops, knocking on doors, getting on the phone, get off that camera, let me see your face, look into my eyes even virtually, like I'm coming for you. I think that was the secret sauce for Juan. You know, I grew up in DC, 
But when I got to college, I got an opportunity to see just like what else is out there. Because there's so much more outside of DC than, than DC that you are going to have a whole lot of fun learning about. I hope so. You will, you will. Juan is participating in these interviews because of Ms. Trotman and her seeing something in him. And even in my conversation with Juan, he just expressed sincere gratitude for someone believing in him. She knows when I'm down or not. She knows when something's going on in my house and she would like just check up a lot and just give me motivation for me to get up and keep your head up and all that stuff and still be you. I honestly think majority of it was Juan. He had to make the decision, like this is what I want. I could, I feel like what I did in virtual, I can take that, like I can take the experience what I did in virtual and like take it in the in-person class so I can be who I am now, like focus more, do all my work, still be a student athlete. What I, whatever I did in virtual that I'm doing now to make myself succeed, I'm gonna bring that in-person learning. The redesign is given a sense of hope, is given a sense of pride that this is our school. So often Anacostia has been a school that has just been forgotten and written off. Of my group of friends, I'm the only one who came to Anna, but I'm ready to show like, Anna is not what people say outside of the school about people who have never been here or like they've heard about it from somebody else. Every piece of this redesign process has been about these kids and making sure that we're lining out what's there for them in their community, for them to have the most opportunities, for them to have access to these jobs. Like there are all these environmental jobs in this city and our kids have no idea, no access, no training. Like what? Why not our kids? Why not the kids here? Why don't they build the bridge at Anacostia? Or why don't they take the job to revitalize the river? Like, why not? And so when you, when you hear that and you see the economic boom happening in their city and you hear that they want jobs out of high school and you hear that they want to be better prepared for college, you act on behalf of students and, and, and their community. And I think, yeah, I get a little bit emotional when I think about it, but um, this has been the greatest gift for me as a leader, but I think as just a human being on this earth, to be a part of this story, to be a part of Anacostia's journey is just, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. And um, I'm really grateful for it, that's for sure.